everything, but I, I still felt like it's a good idea to just go without being seen for an entire day. Hey, we had a blast at Becky's birthday party, and you will too. I'm not charging nothing. Just thought I'd show my movies is all. The Jones family vacation to Palm Beach, Florida, and Becky's eighth birthday party have not yet been rated. Hey, Fred Jones Movie Theater, where two thumbs up is just a signal for my wife to turn up the volume. I, I, I don't get it. Why, why did okay. you? Okay, we're getting ready to do another one, folks. Uh, Michelle, wish I thought we thought he was dead. Hey, guys, snap to it. Look alive. Watching. Hey, do you want to? Oh boy, we're doing it again. Come on, people, let's get a wiggle on. Let's move it. Come on. Here we go. I need a Let's start with coffee, tea, or me. For the enjoyment of everyone during question one, please, no unnecessary talking. Shh. And I believe this one's called coffee, tea, or me, and you're playing for three thousand dollars cash Sounds money. Good. Put it in gear, cause here we go. Say you're a male flight attendant for Aerotica, the airline that's the subject of a musical number and all that jazz. Based on the number, what is your uniform, chaps, a dance belt, your birthday suit, or panties, hose, and a bra? Oh, God. Um, I'm going to guess maybe... Three? Your birthday suit? No, that would be more like the air up there, if you know what I'm saying. Oh. Should have picked this. The men in the erotica number stripped down to their dance belts. I think you might want to cover up a bit during meal service. Um, sir, I didn't order the butt steak. Okay, okay 80s category. music on the bounty. Cut the red wire! Watch out, it's gonna blow! That was close. Too close. Let's give a nice warm welcome to 80s music on the bounty. $3,000 for this one. Hey, do you remember that 80s band Night Ranger and that hit song they had called Sister Christian? Well, sure. suppose the song had been called Fletcher Christian after the character in Mutiny on the Bounty. Because he's never played him, which actor would you not expect to see in the video? Marlon Brando, Clark Gable, Mel Gibson, or Jeremy Irons? Okay, Mel Gibson played him, I think. Uh, Marlon Brando did. I'm gonna guess maybe Clark Gable? Clark Gable? No, he was Fletcher Christian in the 1935 mutiny on the bounty. Frankly, it Captain Bly, I don't give a damn. <laughs> Let's see what a correct answer looks like. <laughs> As of 1996, Jeremy Irons has never portrayed Fletcher Christian on the big screen. Although, I hear he did play the misunderstood suicidal boy in Pearl Jam's Jeremy video. <laughs> Okay, and I would one can hear you scream. A question so real you can almost touch it! <laughs> Filmed in spectacular 3D! <laughs> this category is known as In Hollywood, no one can hear you scream. And it's worth $2,000 if you get this one right. You know, stuff like this is why actors shouldn't do their own stunts. Picture this. For her next film, starlet Ann Sheridan has agreed to jump off a building without an airbag. Based on her nickname, what sound would you expect her to make when she hits the ground? Poof, oomph, splat, or tootie? Oh god. Um, poof maybe? No, that'd be if she were shot from a cannon. <laughs> Bet you wish you'd pick this. And Sheridan was known as the Oomph Girl. I guess the nickname Splattered Bloody Mess Girl was already taken. Well, that's awkward. All right, hit me. Uh, couldn't help is so hard to find. Ah, right out of Jaws. Shark! I proudly present, good help is so hard to find. Two G's if you get this one right. Hey, try this on. Imagine this wacky episode of the Jetsons. Rosie the robot is acting just like the robot Gork from the day the Earth stood still, when suddenly George leaps forward and shouts, Klaatu Barada Nikto. What has he just done? Switched his brain with Rosie, stopped Rosie from destroying the world, sold Rosie to Mr. Spacely, or directed Rosie into a black hole. Uh, he stopped Rosie from destroying the world. Klaatu Barada Nikto is the phrase used in the day the Earth stood still to stop the robot Gort from destroying the world. Unfortunately, the movie is no help for what to yell if you want to stop Astro from going on the rug. Category, please. Computers are smarter than you are. He's so 
Prime all the time. Five. The category, computers are smarter than you are. Thousand bucks if you get it. Ready? Let's pretend, shall we? Christmas is fast approaching and your kid asks for a HAL 9000 home computer. If it does the same thing it did in 2001, A Space Odyssey, what can you expect to happen? You and your family will be very old, you and your family will be dead, your house will be spotless, or you will be in jail. I think you and your family would be dead. In 2001, A Space Odyssey, the HAL 9000 computer goes haywire and kills most of the astronauts living on the ship. On the bright side, though, in heaven there are no cheese logs. I need a cat. And the award for most pretentious goes to... Password. Nah, tell him six sent me. The selection is, and the award for most pretentious goes to, and you pop a right answer, you got 2,000 bucks. Okay, Conan the Vocabularian, maybe you can help me out. Tell me this. Tell me which phrase rhymes with the correct pronunciation of this actor's name. Alf Scenes, Safe Pines, Mouth Inez, or Chafe Fiends? I think it's Rafe Fine. So it's sort of like Safe Pines. Rafe Fines rhymes with Safe Pines. Yeah, he was great in the English Pashi. It was so entertaining in the Okay, game. pick a category. Um, Avengers. You're welcome. Parents on fire. Uh-oh, French cutlets prime chore. Oh dear god, it's a chipper's question. Your gibberish category for today is Parrots on Fire. Gonna start out with 5,000 bucks on this one. Okay, you're gonna have about 30 seconds to solve this, but every second and a half, I'm taking away some money. Okay, eyes front and tell me, what location does this rhyme with? Polly should gawk dove flame. Polly should gawk dove flame. First hint, it's a famous tourist attraction. Oh, so got it. Home. Start typing your answer, then... Yeah, I want to be immortalized by having people walk on me, dogs crap on me, and kids spit gum on me. Ah, fame, I'm gonna live forever. <laughs> you gotta work. Okay, I need a cat. Fame does not come for free. Uh, soap. For your enjoyment, how much silk would a best actress chuck? $1,000 at stake on this one. Pull out your antenna and get ready to buzz. If the Academy Awards ceremony moved from Hollywood to the setting of the film Silkwood, what would the celebrity audience probably wear to the event? Erotic lingerie, radiation suits, strategically placed leaves and branches, or scuba gear? I think it had Silkwood, I think, was something to do with uh, nuclear reactors, so it would be radiation suits. Silkwood is about a woman who tries to uncover the safety hazards at a nuclear power plant, so radiation suits would be in order. <laughs> ah yes, the glitz, the glamour, the radioactive glow. Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, tanning for you. The truth about Greece. Well, what do we have here? The truth about freaks. And we're talking 2000 for this baby. Get your finger out of your ear and listen up. We're going. Which of the following is true of the 1932 cult classic, Freaks? Shirley Temple plays the bearded lady. It won the Oscar for best choreography. It features real life circus freaks or it inspired a Zippy the Pinhead doll. It features real life circus freaks. Freaks has real circus freaks in it. So it's not one of your better first date movies, depending, of course, upon the date. Gooba Gabba, one of us, one of us. All right, hit me. Uh, to beat up a dead drummer. Go! <gasps> All right.
right, here's the deal. To the beat of a dead drummer. You get this one right, and it's $3,000. Remember the movie Spinal Tap? Well, sure. imagine that after the tragic deaths of their first three drummers, the band agrees to do some public service announcements. Because none of the first three drummers died in this manner, which public safety PSA would you least expect Spinal Tap to make? The facts about spontaneous combustion, safeguarding is no accident, taking charge of electrical safety, or beware of strange vomit. Ooh. Uh, so where's safe vomit, maybe? Sorry, the second Spinal Tap drummer choked on vomit, and if you recall, they never determined whose vomit it was. <laughs> Let's take a look at the right answer. Hmm. Of the first three Spinal Tap drummers, none of them died by electrocution. And I think it's great that the boys are doing those PSAs. At least they're not selling out and doing lame-ass TV commercials. Uh, wait. Okay, we're halfway home. Let's see how round two treats you. Now remember, everything in round two is worth double, so heads up. All right, I gotta do a little bit better here. I need a category. Why do you play Thunder Job application? Coming at you, Monty Python and the job application. I'm sending over 4,000 dead presidents if you get this one. Hey, you know that movie Monty Python and the Holy Grail? Sure. Well, say the knights who say knee are accepting new members into their fellowship. Because they can't bear to hear his name, which applicant would they have trouble interviewing? Michael Knight, Dr. No, Bob Newhart, or Cousin It? They, were, they have a huge problem with the word It. The word It causes the knights who say knee quite a bit of discomfort, so they'd have a difficult time interviewing Cousin It from the Adams family. Although I hear he's considering changing his name to Cousin The category is a question you don't refuse, and it's worth $2,000 if you get this one right. Okay, maybe you remember this. In the early 80s, Bananarama did a song with the lyric Robert De Niro's Waiting, Talking Italian. What movie was probably paused on their VCR when they wrote that song? The Godfather, The Godfather Part 2, The Godfather Part 3, or The Three Godfathers? Uh, De Niro was the second Godfather. In The Godfather Part 2, De Niro plays a young Vito Corleone almost completely in Italian. Yeah, suppose if Bananarama watched some porn movies, they'd write a song called, I'm Your Penis? Doubtful? Category, please. Three moments in film history. Thirteen. <laughs> Thirteen. This one's called, Great Moments in Film History. Play your cards right, you win 4,000 bucks. All right, help me out here. Buzz in and start typing when you know. What's the name of that film? You know, it's got that girl with all the braids in her hair, and that guy who played that drunk named Arthur. It came out in 1979, and it features Ravel's Bolero. What oh, okay, got movie? it. Let's see what you think. Start typing, then hit return. Uh, we're talking about the movie 10. Yep. I remember Bo Derek, and for some reason I thought the movie was called 2. Hmm. Okay, I get uh, a category. At least three of us live in the yellow submarine. And I believe this one's called, at least three of us live in a yellow submarine. Better wake up, there's 6,000 bucks at stake. Okay, imagine it's the late 60s and the Beatles have just fired Ringo Starr and hired a famous movie character to take his place. If the new group were introduced as John Paul George and the Ringo Kid, which actor would be playing drums? Paul Newman, Steve McQueen, Robert Mitchum, or John Wayne? Yeah, I think the Ringo Kid was his stagecoach and it was John Wayne. John Wayne played the Ringo Kid in the movie Stagecoach. Ringo, of course, played the slightly off-key kid in pretty much every Beatle film. Yeah, they, they put up with him. All right, hit Don't me. Don't head burn yourself. Hey, all right. Guess what you just picked. It's time to play Dis or Dad. 
This dis or dat's category name is... Don't have burn yourself. Okay, I'm gonna read off seven movie titles, and for each one I want you to tell me if it's an Audrey Hepburn film or a Katherine Hepburn film. As okay. each film title comes up, if it's an Audrey Hepburn movie, press one. If it's a Katherine Hepburn film, press two. And press four to skip. Each correct answer will net you 1,000 bucks. And a thousand taken away for each incorrect answer in any that you don't get to. All right, let's put 30 seconds on the clock. Let's do it. Breakfast at Tiffany's. Audrey that would be Audrey. Hepburn. Funny face. Audrey. I'm Golden Pond. Catherine. Wait until dark. Uh, Audrey? Bringing up baby. Catherine. The Lion in Winter. Catherine. Last one. Catherine. That's all she wrote. Bring a beauty. Let's see your new score. There you go, next time you treat. Okay, let's get out of here. I need a category. I was obeyed, but no dumps. Chew on this. Almost homemade, but abandoned. no gumps. Four thousand big ones for a right answer here. Let's see how you handle this one. Imagine a lost scene from Forrest Gump in which Forrest is hired to portray Gump in the movie Legend. What is he doing? Coaching his team to the World Series, leading fairies against a demon, attacking terrified Bayou fishermen, or chasing Ichabod Crane on horseback? I think it had to do with uh, the fairies. In the movie Legend, Gump is the elfin leader who teams up with Tom Cruise to defeat the demon named Darkness. Tell me something. Are you crazy or just stupid? Stupid is as stupid does, Mr. Darkness. Okay, pick a candy. I'll take the first door out of here, Monty. The following question has been rated 17. No questions under 17 permitted. Let's see what we got going. I'll take the first door out of here, Monty. How does $2,000 sound? All right, grab your security blanket and imagine this. You're being chased by a monster and you enter a room with four doors. Each door has a sign on it indicating what it leads to. Which room will be the safest? The one marked Gremlins, the one marked Ghoulies, the one marked Critters, or the one marked Goonies? Probably the one marked Goonies. The door marked Goonies will lead to a room full of cute adventurous kids like Sean Astin and Corey Feldman. <laughs> On second thought, maybe that's not the best door. It's good now. Alright, hit me. Uh, let's do the lunch mob one. What do we got out there? It looks like... It looks like 18, sir. Now showing, lynch mob, lynch mob, roly-poly lynch mob. You give me a right answer, I give you a quick 4,000. Fire up those frontal lobes, here's the question. Yikes, an angry mob made up of David Lynch movie characters is on the rampage in Hollywood. Which character would not get hauled in for being in this lynch mob? Laura Palmer, the elephant man, Barton Fink, or Eraserhead? I think it's the elephant man. No. Let me show you what someone smart would have picked. Uh, Barton Fink is the title character in a movie by the Coen brothers, not oh, David Lynch. Man. Although, I hear Barton and Eraserhead are both under investigation for violating some sort of gravitational laws with their haircuts. Category, please. Uh, Saturday morning drinking songs. Okay, give it up for Saturday morning drinking songs. This one can net you $6,000. Heads up, here it comes. If the makers of Schoolhouse Rock changed their motto from knowledge is power to that of Faber College from Animal House, what would be their new motto? Knowledge is helpful, knowledge is power, knowledge smallage, or knowledge is good. Uh, knowledge is good, maybe? The motto of Faber College is, knowledge is good. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Uh, don't know. Drink beer? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I need a category. Yo. Yo. 
say hello to. Yo. And you pocket 2,000 bucks if you get this one. Strap on your helmet, we're going in. Which of these movie reviews best describes Sly Stallone's performance as a compassionate trucker fighting to get his son back, set against the backdrop of competitive arm wrestling? He sure had a mighty big fist. That film was a personal victory for him. He was over the top in the final scene, or his dramatic scenes were a little rocky. He was over the top in the final scene. Sly faces the challenge of playing a compassionate arm wrestler in Over the Top. Sly's next movie has him playing a misunderstood thumb wrestler. Apparently the thumb wins. Hmm. Okay, uh, pick a category. Call me by my first name. You want the attack? You got it. Heads up, here is your clue. Call me by my first name, Disturbing. or you can call me Mr. Cookie if you're nasty. Okay, good luck. Okay, Janet Jackson. That would be John, I believe. Yuri, that's a Yuri. Maverick. Fred. Mick. Is it Merlin? Really? It was Michael. Michael Dundee. George, I think you got it. Let's see who I brought up your score. That's the game. Pretty solid. Player, I couldn't have done a better job myself. But then, I wasn't playing by myself, was I? But seriously, Player, and I don't say this to just everybody. You don't know, All right, Jack. that's a wrap, everybody. Get the commercials rolling and roll. What's happening? Are we going again? Number one on the high scoreboard. You great company. A lot of wonderful movies have been number one at the box office. Let's see, uh, The Trial of Billy Jack, Home Alone 2, the remake of King Kong. I guess what I'm saying is, don't get a big head about it. Let me know if you want to play again and go for that number two spot. Hey, I can do that. Well, now you can with the all-new at-home big budget action play. Okay, that was another episode of You Don't Know Jack the Ride. Um, no, I'm sorry. Another, that, folks, that was another episode of You Don't Know Jack Movies. If you like what you saw, make sure you um, hit the thumbs up, hit the notification bell if you want to see more of our stuff, and, uh, be, and leave a comment in the section below. Uh, be sure to subscribe and spread the word. We'll see you next time here on Tickets, Please Gaming as the arcade is now closed.